Assassin's Creed Origins is the 10th title in the Assassin's Creed series released for PC and gaming consoles. The game takes place in Egypt and has an enormous explorable map including many famous Egyptian landmarks like the Great Pyramids, the Sphinx, tombs, and buildings that have been unearthed by archaeological research and discovery. Graphics. The graphics for Assassin's Creed Origins are stunning. This game is beautiful. The distance draw rate, the amazing detail of all the Egyptian cultural buildings. There is so much to explore in this game from arid deserts where you can experience hallucinations if you stay too long to uh, thriving agricultural cities along the Nile and everything in between. You see all walks of Egyptian cultural life as well as some Roman architecture and Roman culture and lifestyle blended in to this area. The graphics for this game receive a 9 out of 10. Story. We're going to explore the story of this game in a little bit of detail. So be warned that there may be some information that I will talk about that can be considered spoilers. The story in this game does not exactly do a good or detailed job of explaining the origins of the Assassin's Guild and their creed. It's kind of rushed into the last hour or so of the main story narrative. For 90% of the game, you follow the main character, Bayek, and his interactions with his lover and wife at the time, Aya. Although Aya only appears in about 10% of the main storyline, it turns out she is actually the primary character responsible for developing the assassins. This causes some major disconnect between the storytelling and the game as you really care about Bayek. You care about what he's going through. You care about the fact that he's lost his son and that he's torn between the sense of duty and helping people and seeking revenge to find the person who took his son so that he can guarantee that his son rests in peace, what ends up happening is Aya, who is later mentioned in other Assassin's Creeds by another Egyptian name, turns out to be the legendary character in the story and the one who really ends up developing the Assassin's Guild. Towards the end of the main story, we see that Bayek and Aya's relationship disintegrates. Again, the game doesn't do a great job here of really explaining why it disintegrates. Yes, they have different opinions on who they should support and who they should back, including Cleopatra and Julius Caesar, torn between Rome and Egypt, and how to bring about justice but they don't really do a very good job of tugging at your emotions or explaining why this split is so unceremonious. Bayek just shows up and suddenly he and Aya decide that it's over. They're going to throw their relationship away so that they can both be assassins. The story of this game gets a 4 out of 10. Gameplay. In terms of gameplay, the navigation and movement controls of this game are similar to other Assassin's Creed, but they've been simplified. However, there were times throughout this game when I was in combat, or I needed to escape or hide or go up or down a very steep cliff face or castle wall, and the controls just would not cooperate. The character would slide to the right when I was trying to go up or when I was trying to descend he would get stuck on the edge of the wall and not want to descend. The other thing that has changed with the, the game controls here 
is the fighting has been completely revamped. I really liked the fighting in the older Assassin's Creed, especially Assassin's Creed 1, Assassin's Creed 2. I really liked the tight controls. You could take on multiple enemies if you were smart by using proper counter timing and being able to navigate well around the enemies. Now the controls are somewhat more like Dark Souls and other traditional action hack and slash RPGs and I personally am not a fan. It felt like I was not able to control the direction of my swing or my attack as much as I used to be able to in the old Assassin's Creed. Even with a lock on, there were times that I would do one of the charge up power moves and completely miss the enemy. Just completely go sideways even though I was locked on. This type of combat also requires that you are always moving the camera along with your character. And to me, this is not as good of a combat, not as tight of a combat as the old Assassin's Creed. Now, given that the old Assassin's Creed's controls did allow you to handle large groups of enemies with great proficiency, and sometimes made huge battles a little simplistic. And perhaps that's why they changed the control scheme. For gameplay and controls, I give this game a 4 out of 10. Replay value. This game doesn't have a lot of replay value. The story was extremely linear. There were very few choices to be made in the story. It was simply do what you're told by the mission and allow that mission to unravel the main storyline. There was a little bit of ship combat in this game, but not nearly as much as what made Assassin's Creed Black Flag popular. A lot of the side quest missions were rinse and repeat. Rescue someone who has been captured or injured by the enemy. Take out the enemy. Carry that person to safety. Guide that person back to the mission source. Then possibly go and track down an important item that the original attacker stole from them and is now hiding out somewhere else. And while this did uh, encourage map exploration... There was little variety to this. For the overall game score, I gave this game a 6 out of 10.